Hello, guys. We want to show you around the training ground. Come on. Come with us. Oh, I love you guys. The best one. Changing room, our captain here. Feel my world captain there. Come on. Uh, baby. What are you doing, baby? Darling. This is a laundry room. She one of the best. After training, we came here to watch the clothes, too. Yeah, yeah. More important thing for us. How many boots do you have, Salomon? No, no, no. Look, how many? One, two, three, four, five, six. And you? Look at me. One, two. The striker. No, no many for me, eh? More boots than the trailer. Oh. Yes, yes, yes. Here is where, where Salomon worked very hard. Before training and after training. Oh. Subcapitan here. The subcapitan. The big boy there. The strong guy. Stronger guys in the, in the team. Jonas, Jonas Olson. Oh, baby! Show me. Hey, look to it, guys. Yeah. Here is the physical right. room. He's yeah. our baby. George. Our first baby. Beautiful massage, beautiful hands. Oh. Oh. And, the, and the, the younger player <laughs> of, the, of the team. 18 years old. <laughs> no, no, no. I've got a haircut today, no? Oh. What was, come on. Oh. Baby. <laughs> Come on. She, My she, baby. She loves that. Eh? She loves that. Seriously. Every time I see her, she needs something like that. Smiling. Oh. -na -na, ta -na -na, ta -na -na. Let me show you the canteen. I love Jill. Hi. Hi, hi, hi. You okay? She's not one, one of the best. Oh. She's the best. <laughs> she you. is the best. Yeah. And the chef, too. Eh? Come on. Thank you. Yeah, come, 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 yeah, come, 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 come. Always working, my friend. Always yeah, working. <laughs> all the time. You know, I don't know what, what you're doing there, but all the time working with this guy. Thank you very much. After a disappointing defeat to Crystal Palace just days earlier, Tony Pulis has cancelled Monday's training session. Instead, the club will pay a visit to the Donna Louise Children's Hospice, which supports over 200 local children with life-limiting conditions and their families. As a children's hospice, we look after children that are diagnosed with conditions that mean that they're unlikely to reach adulthood. Our mission really is to bring normality where normality does not exist. When I was introduced to the Donna Louise over 10 years ago, you know, it wasn't as vibrant as what it is now. It wasn't as big. You know, the improvements that have been made are just unbelievable, just remarkable, and it's a great testament to, to the people here. It's so important that people like Tony are involved. He's been good to us for so many years, but he carries a certain profile, and um, his voice actually counts and his voice matters. Now, in professional football in this country, the players live in a different world than, than what most people live in. So to bring them down to earth um, and, and let them see how lucky they are and how fortunate they have been, yeah, it doesn't do them any harm at all. Pulis has helped raise plenty of awareness and money during his more than decade-long involvement with the hospice. And while his players spend more time with the children, back at the training ground, there's always work to be done. Sometimes we've got, like, three different set of kids coming in, whereas if, like, first team... They've got two days training. We've got two set of kids from first team. But when it's muddy, oh. Everyone says morning, hello. So it's not like they're just like, oh, I'm not going to say hello to her. They're actually really nice. <laughs> Meanwhile, footballers' most important accessories are stored just down the hall. Who's got the smallest feet? Smallest feet, definitely James. It's always a, he's, a, he's a knight. But James is actually quite funny with his boots because he has one, one of his boots is a size eight, and his other boot is a seven and a half because it fits him a lot better. So the biggest is Johnny Evans over, over here. He's a size 12, along with Jonas, Jonas Olsen, who is also a size 12. And you can see, you can probably tell just by looking at the size of them. Absolute, absolutely huge. While Albion are one of the most British-oriented clubs in the Premier League, there remains an international flair to the baggies. Just a small sample size of the club's diversity is Argentine Claudio Jacob and Venezuelan Salomon Rondon. 
when I came here, I didn't know the color, the number, anything. And when you meet with some people like South America, you feel like like home, you know, something like something familiar. The language barrier was difficult for Solomon at first, but his personality shone through. And even though he couldn't speak English, you know, you could tell he was a bubbly, infectious character. He's got his controversial outfits and his lively colours. Like Claudio said, when, when you see the, the South American people no? and the same language, and you feel comfortable. Claudio's been a big help in that. Claudio's a lively character. You know, he's always late, but, you know, we let him off with that. And he's a fierce competitor, but, you know, they're great lads. And I've always found that in my career, really. South American lads especially, you know, always have big characters and are real loving and, and good to have around the place. Oh, where we go there, little bit bright, a little bit quicker. They welcomed me a very good from the start and it was a very good group of players. Very mature and, at the same time, very uh, uh, funny group. Alan, uh, obviously, speak French as well, so it's, it's very nice to have also somebody who speaks my language. But most of the time he's on the phone, so it's difficult to communicate with, with Alan. Still with his headphones. He has the most expensive bill uh, for this phone as well. Although Chadley, Neom and the rest of the baggies travel to Everton this weekend, preparations for the match day programme are already underway for the club's next home game. The last cover to shoot is Genesis for the Arsenal game, and we're using just the three central figures. So um, Hal will be there, Nasser in the centre, and Jake Livermore is on the right. So we've already shot Jake, and we've already shot Nasser, so it's just a case of one quick right. shot. Perfect, thanks Hal. Nice and easy, you won't look like anything until it's been photoshopped into the other picture. So The first couple were a little bit tricky, because I don't think people necessarily got what we were going to do and how it was going to work out, but when you look at them as a group of, of albums, it really does work really well. While next year's programme plans are up in the air, one thing that's never in doubt is the importance of the club's partnership with the Albion Foundation, which provides sporting and educational opportunities to disadvantaged members of the local community. Proof that at this club, Football isn't the only focus. It's an opportunity for adults with learning difficulties and disabilities to get them into job roles. We want companies to see and look at what they can do, not what they can't do. I never dreamt of being here, actually doing the like, paint and decorating, ready for the big game. One branch of the foundation is the Girls Youth Club, a programme designed to help girls with learning disabilities. You use all that pink paint? <laughs> Someone suggested that I should do the Album Foundation once a week. On the first day I started, I thought, mm, I'm not sure about this. Now, they can't get rid of me. I love West Bromwich Albion. It's not just a club, it changes people's lives. Back at the Foundation's headquarters, Dave Lewis is hard at work for the media and communication team. Wheelchair bound since the age of two, Lewis is a West Brom and England power chair footballer and is an example of the impact the foundation has had on those in the community. It's not an easy sport to get involved in. You know, you need actually money, seven and a half thousand pounds, but this is where the Albion Foundation are great because they've got like chairs available for people to try. And if we can help the local area, then, you know, that's got to be a benefit to, to many, many people. The Albion Foundation relies on ambassadors such as longtime supporter Dave Healy, who hits the streets to raise awareness. They support blind football, they support wheelchair football. And as a disabled person, I'm part of that world. As they say, this blind old codger from West Brom can give some inspiration to the youngsters, and it works, then great. Up next, Members of West Brom staff discuss the club's player development and recruitment process. There's nothing better for supporters as if you can produce your own talent. It's not just about your football, it's about your mental approach to it. You have got to sacrifice hell of a lot to become a top footballer. Thank you. 
My job is really to look after all the players, I look after all the staff, I look after everybody in this restaurant. Thank you. I've seen a lot of players and everybody come and go, but I've loved them all. I've loved them all. It's like a family, and it's lovely. Honestly, top class. Chefs, really good. Jean's service is like, it's like having a mum, honestly. It's better than the food at Man United. There you go, that's how good it is. Today, we're preparing the lunch for the 18s, 21s and first team. We're also preparing salmon and blade of beef because we're away tomorrow. So we travel to Everton and then I'll load the coach up with the food and everything that we come home after the match. They have got their meal on the way home. But we use the same hotels quite a lot. So we just send them our menu requests, what we need, and they look after us. We know that diet is really important for a player's performance and their health, so we try and work with them on a one-to-one -one basis. So we'll look at what their food habits are like. Um, we need to find out where they're living. Are they cooking for themselves or do they have wives cooking for those? We can control their breakfast and their lunch here and obviously a lot of what they do match days as well. But yeah, what they go home and do where they eat is entirely, entirely up to them. <laughs> With players' nutritional needs taken care of, attention shifts onto the pitch. And as assistant head coach Mark O'Connor soon finds out, no finish is easy when the cameras are watching. With Thursday's training done and dusted, Tony Pulis turns tour guide. Yeah, we're coming into the staff changing room. Kempy, put your towel round you. Someone wants to speak to you. Kempy's been my assistant for about... How many years have you been with me, Dave? 103. 103 years, he says. Always finishes early. You know, I'm always the last one that stays... Last leave again today. <laughs> First day, last day. <laughs> yeah, he's talking about me there. Yeah, it's just the footballing staff. Jillian's just put some lipstick on. <laughs> you have Jill, you fibber. Jill's seen a lot of managers off. She'll most probably see me off as well. Having been a manager for 25 years, Pulis has had coaching stints up and down the country. But no matter where he's been, he's maintained an old-school approach to player recruitment. Recruitment seems to be an area that people are allowed to bring players in, whether the manager knows about it or not. I've worked through my career and I've spent a lot of time picking and selecting my own players. And if those players fail, it's because of me. So this is where it sort of, it starts really, in terms of the recruitment process. It, there's a big argument and a big debate going on around analysis against old-fashioned scouting. And the, and the truth is, you've got to have both. You know, the player that you watch isn't necessarily the player that you get. And, and that, that is the skill of scouting. Another skill of scouting is identifying who to promote within your own club. On this day, it's 16-year-old academy product Jamie Soul, who heads into Tony Pulis's office to sign a professional contract. Jamie's agreed to uh, his, his sign his professional contract. It's not something we do all the time. We see you as one of those elite players coming through. You've got an excellent opportunity now. The fact that you're in this man's office means that you're on his radar already. The big thing for me is, you know, the, the, with academy football and young players, this is just the first step. You know, the most important thing to realise and understand is that it, there's such a, a long way to go. And it's not just about your football, it's about your attitude and your, your, your mental approach to it. You have got to sacrifice a hell of a lot to become, you know, a top footballer. And, um, you know, I'm just hoping and praying that you'll grab that opportunity and that chance and in a, a year's time, maybe two years' time, be training with us and, and working with us. Yeah, good lad. Well, you're already at the club, but welcome again. Well done, well done, well deserved. While Sol is still some way from making it to Albion's first team, one player who has already progressed up the club's ranks is 18-year-old Sam Field. There's nothing better for supporters as if you can produce your own talent. Sam Field is an absolutely outstanding young player, but an outstanding person as well. He's been at the club since he was seven years of age. Technically, he's as good and as gifted as any footballer I've seen and worked with at that age. Not many managers do play youngsters in the Prem now. It's very difficult to get in, so yeah, I can only thank him for chucking us in. Sam's probably the one who's had the most um, game time this season. A real level-headed lad, you know, really professional, you know, dedicated to his craft. He really wants to make it, and that shines through. 
I always had a dream that I could get there. You have to make sure you work for it because you don't get it sealed on a silver platter. Every time I get on that pitch, I just do my best for the team. One day, I'd take my place, and, and that's the transition in football, you know, that's, that'd be fantastic. With just over 24 hours until kick-off at Everton, Albion's first teamers take care of final preparations, including an always important film session. And as is the case with any away trip, logistics cannot be overlooked. This is the wall chart for the season, and it is, it looks a bit chaotic, but June 19th is when the fixtures come out. And I'll try to get that done within about a two week window, get all my hotels planned. You need to be well in advance because it just gives you time in case there are issues if fixtures change. But a detailed travel schedule isn't the only decoration on these walls. I'm a massive Red Sox fan and uh, it was just that kind of embodiment, probably an Irish thing, Boston, the Red Sox. We're in an environment that's surrounded by football so when you come in here it's a bit of a conversational piece, it's something different. It's great like Salem, Venezuela, big baseball coach, so he comes in you know, you'll often pick up the bat and give it a swing, make sure you're standing on the other side of the room. As match day nears, the club are all set to make the trip up to Merseyside. But it seems as though one key ingredient of the drive up is missing. Here we are again, another road trip, another week. Where's our driver? Lee! Empty, it's always a good start. So it's 118. And I can bet you, and if you're filming this, I bet you about 20 quid, Claudio Jakob, Salomon and Jonas will be the last three on the bus. So. All set, Chef? Getting ready, nearly there. What is all of this? Uh, PlayStation, uh, computer and some clothes. And um, my toilet bag. Yeah, yeah. See you tomorrow. With all accounted for inside the bus, the club settle in for the two-hour trip, knowing that a key showdown with Everton awaits them on the other side. After the break, Albion supporters make their way to Goodison Park for West Brom's meeting with Everton. There's usually singing and uh, joviality. With grey skies covering Merseyside, Albion arrive at their hotel and immediately preparations for the evening ahead are underway. You have to go through everything with you, usual so stuff. Basically, what we do is when we come in, first and foremost, we usually meet somebody from the hotel, front of house at the hotel, just to ensure what we've asked for is what they've got ready for us. Okay. All right, yeah, thank you. As the baggies settle into their surroundings, the staff are making sure everything at the buffet is in its proper place. A key component to the meal on the night before kickoff? Options. These are lamb, it's just got a mint jus. Most of the lads will go for fish or chicken tonight, but it's just a different alternative than plus the staff. You okay? With kickoff just hours away, Albion supporters back in the West Midlands are preparing for their trip up to Merseyside. It's good to have this you know, same group of us travel away from home every week. Had a good season so far, of course, which makes it even more enjoyable. You get to know everybody, more or less. The same people, same faces. My dad took me up when I was seven. I've been going up for 46 years now. Here you go. Cleverly, get coffee, There's usually singing and uh, joviality. Garrett McCauley is better than JT. Get there, hopefully get three points and then have a nice journey back. Willie Albion, Willie Albion, Willie Albion. It is almost like two leagues. You know, the top six are really strong, powerful, you know, the powerhouses of the Premier League. 
Everton are trying to close the gap on them, so they, they'll probably feel that they're above the rest of us and, in, and rightfully in that seventh place, but, you know, they're our target. It's going to be a difficult game. They've got a top manager. The manager's a very, very good manager, very astute, knows what he's doing. You know, they've got some really, really good players. The supporters here will know about Lukaku. It is always one of the best atmospheres in the Premier League and probably one of the most hostile and intense as well. But, you know, that's the target we've got. We're four points behind them. It'd be amazing if we could catch them and we'll give it our all. This game will have probably have a massive effect on that, so it's probably going to be a pivotal moment for the, for the rest of the season, the result from this game. You can go right through their team. They have some outstanding individuals. You know, Ronald's got them playing as a team and, and their results have reflected that. Parky plays it forward, might fall there for Barkley, and they do the box. Barkley shoots, good save from Foster, and it's picked up by Kevin Morales, who drives it in, and Everton take the lead after 38 minutes here at Goodison Park. Despite the travelling supporters making their presence felt, it's one of the club's former players who soon announces his presence. Romelu Lukaku, who spent the 2012-13 season on loan at West Brom, first sets up Morgan Schneiderlin on the cusp of half-time. Then, late in the second half, the Belgian striker adds a goal of his own, sealing the win for Everton. Barkley. Oh, good delivery for Lukaku! He's customary good as the part goal! He maintains his record of having scored in every game at Goodison in 2017. Sets the seal on the victory. It's been a good season so far. Is the important thing not to let it drift away. We'll find that form again. We'll come again. We've still got, you know, 10 games to go for the rest of the season. I'm sure we'll, we'll finish the season not on 40 points. Let's put it that way and we'll, we'll keep battling. Tony, where and how did that get away today? That was disappointing. I think the, obviously the two goals before half time was, um, you know, killed killed the game for us up, up until that point. I thought we were well in the game and um, we're disappointed. They're a great group of lads. They've worked their socks off as they always do. Despite a second straight defeat, it's that work ethic that gives the club confidence as they return to the West Midlands, ready to go again. On the final episode of Premier League Behind the Badge. Good morning, West Bromwich Albion. We are making a difference, changing kids' lives. So it will take 10,000 hours to become a professional footballer. Dream come true, isn't it? Don't worry, they're, they're human beings, you can talk to them. <laughs> it's fine. It's a tough old job. My way is to bring good people in, whether it's on your staff, whether it's around the training ground. We've been here a long time and you, you get to know people, you know, they become friends. It is a family. I can't imagine working anywhere else. Life is about good people. 